Working for you. A weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your Sankit Stevens government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports, and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of Sankit Stevens. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful Twin Island Federation. Working for you is weekly, every Wednesday live from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on ZIZ Radio, with FM, and Sugar City FM with rebroadcast on participating stations. Working for you. Good afternoon and welcome to Working for You. Thank you very much for joining us for today's program after the very long weekend. I hope that you had a very good time in in Nevis for the Culturama festivities. Today we are joined by Mr. Michael Penny, who is the Senior Foreign Service Officer in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And today, Mr. Penny will be discussing the role of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and in particular, he will be talking about passports and visas. Mm -hmm. Mr. Penny, welcome. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome to the listening audience. And I am indeed grateful to be here to represent the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of St. Kitts and Nevis. Thank you, sir. I think it's your first time on this program. Mm -hmm. That is correct by my account. But it won't be your last. I, I trust that it will not be. Okay. Now, Mr. Penny, you work in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I gather that you are part of the walls in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, meaning that you've been there for a very long time. Long time. How long have you been working in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs? A few years, I prefer to say. A few years? Yes, indeed. A few years. A few years can be five, you know. But it's more than five, so uh -huh. we'll keep it like that. <laughs> but it seems, it seems like a long time because you have to progress... Um, swiftly, smoothly, you have to learn and learn very quickly. And to, because people come with questions, they ask questions. And the ministry is working on behalf of the citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis. Mm -hmm. What specifically is the role of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs? Well, for one, we deal with advising on formulating or articulating the, and implementing the foreign policy of St. Kitts and Nevis. We monitor relations between St. Kitts and Nevis and the rest of the world. So that entails going out and seeking to establish or receiving information or requests for establishing diplomatic relations. So we maintain those relations that we establish and maintain close working relations with uh, diplomatic missions accredited to St. Kitts and Nevis. So you have local missions, you have embassies here. So if they, even though the embassies are here, whatever they need, they should actually come to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Also, we have our embassies overseas. And so we are responsible for liaison. They are, they are the face out there because they, and they represent the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the government of St. Kitts and Nevis because what it is is that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is the face in the international system of St. Kitts and Nevis. And so we have the missions. We have missions in Cuba, in Taiwan, in Ottawa. We have in Washington, D.C. to the Organization of American States. We have a, a permanent mission in New York, and I must say also we have, it's two ambassadors in Washington, D.C. We have two St. James's Court in London, of course. We have a joint mission in Brussels. Uh, we are setting up in Morocco. That's also going to be a joint mission. And I, I think I did say Taiwan, and I'm sure I'm forgetting one at least other place. But, and uh, so the, mi the ministry seeks to coordinate all of that stuff and put the government of St. Kitts and the people, of course, on the international scene. Yes. Right. So, so your role, basically, is establishing relationships. Yes, in the Relationships system. in the national system. International system. Yes. yes. Okay. No good. Now, part of the function of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is in terms of granting visas. The granting of visas is done, actually, by national security but foreign mm -hmm. affairs 
we are involved in the negotiations, the negotiating process. Foreign Affairs is engaged in that very much, and then we work with the Ministry of National Security and perhaps other ministries, it depends on what it is to establish what we're actually trying to do. Mm -hmm. So especially since we have missions overseas, they would uh, liaise with the embassies that are in their jurisdiction. For example, we did our most recent signing would have been with Belarus in Cuba. So our embassy in Cuba, that's another one I forgot, uh, where the esteemed Ambassador Verna Mills she negotiated and she would send to capital to find out to over to look over and to get input from capital and then to sign on behalf of the government of St. Kitts and Nevis. So we have the different embassies and high commissions like in London is a high commission and uh, different places all over the world. So where we have missions, they seek to negotiate these agreements. Mm -hmm. Now tell me something, how many countries does St. Kitts and Nevis have diplomatic relations with? We have over 100, and you'll hear that number again. More than 100 countries mm -hmm. in the world we have diplomatic relations with. Okay, and in terms of ways of waivers? That's why you get another 100. Mm -hmm. Over 100 countries. Over and 100 countries. Over 100 countries. And we are working feverishly to add numbers, um, other countries to the waiver process to establish relations with countries that we have not established relations with and also to work out visa waiver agreements because visa waivers make it easier for the citizens or passport holders of St. Kitts and Nevis to move around freely and who doesn't want to move around freely? Hmm. This might be a very simple question but what is a visa? Nice. A visa gives you the opportunity for, your, for you to land in another country. The country gives you permission. So you go to the airport and the airline looks to see if you require a visa. And if you require a visa, they will not allow you on the airplane. But when you get to that country, the gatekeepers, otherwise known as immigration officers, will decide whether to allow you to get past that entrance. So the visa gives you an opportunity to go to that country, but not necessarily get past the gatekeepers. The gatekeepers, the immigration officers, will determine whether you're going to be a burden, whether you are a risk, whether you have sufficient funds. So we have visa waiver with certain countries, but when you go to those countries, you make sure that you have a return ticket and finances and you know where you're staying and so you're not a burden to society and things like that. So sometimes people may make noise and say, I have a visa. And they turned me back. Well, they looked at you and you, you did not meet the requirements. The visas allow you to get to the country, not necessarily to enter the country, if you please. Right, so the country has a right to allow you to enter yes. or not to enter, right. even though you have you possess a visa. a visa. And they can also make a persona non grata. Mm -hmm. even, that, even though you are there, they just deport you. Mm -hmm. Or they find out that you, you came in as a fraud. And then generally in those visa waiver agreements, they have sections or articles that deal with, for public health, you can suspend the agreement for insurrection or certain other aspects in the interest of that particular country. They may, but they must notify the other country in that bilateral agreement as to why they're suspended and perhaps maybe how long or when they're suspended. And then, if possible, you'll start again. Mm -hmm. So that happens. Okay. Now, what is the process to obtain a visa? It depends on the country. It depends on it very much. So for the United States, which is... I think it's the most popular of all the visas that people are trying to seek, one way or the other. We have an embassy in St. Kitts and Nevis, um, not in an embassy to St. Kitts and Nevis, right? Not in St. Kitts and Nevis. It's in Barbados. And uh, pe persons can visit the website. It's bb.usembassy.gov. You can visit the website and it tells you what to do. One of the good things with that visa waiver is that if you had a visa before, you are able, you remember that we did a press release earlier this year in March, and uh, the, the government of the United States had decided to allow citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis who had a visa before to, uh, instead of having to fly to Barbados and pay accommodation and pay for taxi and all that stuff, that you can renew as long as you meet these requirements. You may not be 
be required. But here, here are the requirements. If your passport, citizen passport holder of St. Kitts and Nevis, your previous visa was issued at the same embassy, so the embassy in Barbados, you are renewing the same type of visa, B1, B2, not an A5 or something like that, or A2 or A1. Um, the prior visa expired less than 12 months, so you have to meet all these requirements. Uh, you may not have been arrested or convicted of any criminal offense, uh, then uh, you are able to submit the passport containing your previous visa, provide that information, and you can apply to the Embassy in Barbados. It's the, the form is a DS-160, and it costs you just 160 US dollars, and you pay online. So you fill out the form, you stay on the same page, um, right there, then it will show you where to go, where you can pay. And once you pay, you send your passport and also the the form which says um, the there's a form that you print after all of that. You just send this one page, confirmation page, along with your passport, you prefer it to go and come. Now, notice I say may, because if the embassy finds uh, something inside there, the embassy reserved the right, if you please, to refuse your visit or to say to you, then you need to travel. And there's something about the criminal record because that's important. If you have messed up and they can find that stuff because sometimes people do things and they don't consider that these things can come back and haunt you. You have a criminal record, you send your criminal record to them, then they look at it and they decide, okay, whether they're going to give you or whether, whether they're not going to give you, so that can really affect you. But it's 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 a wonderful feeling to know that if you can meet these requirements then you can send it the important thing is that sometimes people may call and i have to be up on my p's and q's because i have to ask what was the age so if you got it when you are a child because 14 to 79 you have to travel but suppose you got a visa when you were 10 and you know 15 well they don't have your fingerprints your biometrics and so that's what you would need for let's say for a u.s visa that's one visa that that's the most popular if you needed a visa from the united arab emirates they were about you we can you can contact the ministry because dubai i tell people is in your canada you can fly up to miami drive up to fort lauderdale and fly 15 hours across the gulf and you you're in dubai what you'll need to do is we send you the form yes 15 hours across the gulf we send you the form and uh, you fill out the form, you upload a photo with it. Mm. You can do it on the form or just send a photo. You should have your reservations for your hotel. If you have a airplane reservation and that kind of stuff, it's because you can book a hotel. It's not like somebody has to invite you for you to be able to come there. And everything is done online and they generally don't issue a visa for you way ahead of time. So you'll be fortunate if they issue a visa for you a month ahead of time. It, it just be days but the difference is that they work mondays right down to thursday so people have to remember that when they're applying for a visa so those are the other ones then there's the canadian visa which you can go online and the center is in trinidad it's a visa center in trinidad that you fill out the forms and uh, that's a different that's different to the u.s own the difference is that you can travel they, they need your biometrics so you can travel to Barbados to do your biometrics, but those biometrics will have to wind up in Trinidad. So you travel to Barbados, having filled out the form online. When you fill out the form online, you have to wait for an appointment for you to do your biometrics where you're going to fly to, whether Barbados or Trinidad. You can do the biometrics in either Barbados or Trinidad. So you fill out the form, you wait for an appointment. You go to Barbados or Trinidad, do your biometrics, you fly back home, then they tell you to send your passport. That's when they would put the visa inside your passport. Now, people ask concerning back to passport. Let's say if I go to the U.S. Embassy, you can enter Barbados. You must enter on a passport because everybody needs a passport. So you can enter Barbados on a passport, but on your way to the airport in Barbados, if you were going for the U.S. Embassy, you can, there's a DHL or something nearby or a quick back that you can do it and send it back. You don't have to leave Barbados with the passport, but you need a passport to land in Barbados. Right? So you leave there. So, But for the Canadian visa, you have to fly back home and send your passport. But all the biometrics, so even if you did the biometrics in Barbados, it has to go to Trinidad. 
and then they'll tell you when to send your passport hopefully for them to put the visa in because they could discover something thereafter and decide oops we did tell you to send the passport but we discover some record <laughs> something that you did and it has come back to haunt you now what are biometrics you mentioned your finger your fin they want your fingerprints mm -hmm. that's what they're after know. yes mm -hmm. definitely so they want um generally we call it 10 10 finger printing that's what you did put your fingers here make sure you get all of this make sure you get all of this because they want to have your fingerprints in their system and you okay. got to pay for those biometrics too <laughs> so you got to pay for the visa you got to pay for the biometrics you got to pay for your flight Mm -hmm. That's what you have to do for the Canadian right. visa. So, you have to fill a form. Definitely. The form something is online. Yes, you can. And you then can. you have an. You, there's an interview. Uh, that is. There's, there's an aspect in terms that of the, the interview. Yes. Now, you will get an appointment for the interview, mm -hmm. especially for the U.S. and not the can, the Canadian as well, or the, no, no, not not the, the Canadian, Canadian, but the if, U.S. for the U.S. If it's your first time. You definitely need, you're going to do the interview. Now, what would right. be some of the most um, commonly asked questions for the interview? For the U.S.? For the U.S.? Well, one of the questions is, um, have you ever traveled to the United States? Have you ever, were you ever turned down for a visit? Or ask you... Purpose of travel? Uh, yes. Why, you, why do you want to go to the United States? Mm -hmm. I just want to go. Mm -hmm. uh, where you want to go to the United States? Do yeah. you have any family members in the United States? Yeah. You know? And so it depends on how you answer. They may look at your age and say, yeah, family members, this has been the case. I don't think you're coming back. They may even flip a coin. I don't know. What about who will pay for your stay well, in the United uh, well, States? The, All of that. that the one will, who, that, who will. Mm -hmm. That is what you will fill out on the form. Who yeah. is... Funding. Where are you going to stay? Who is yeah. sponsoring, yeah. sponsoring you? you? And you may put down yourself. Mm -hmm. You may even take all of your documents with you. You may take your house papers, your land papers, and still don't get you. Mm -hmm. Right? And also, you may take a big bank account, but the, the embassies that are away, and I've spoken, and they have told me straight up, they know that people take money, put it on the account, but once the process is over, they, that they happens, return yes. it. Right? Yes. So they are aware of that. You know. So that happens from time to time, and people go on sometimes, you might be surprised, sometimes people apply over and over. And it may be, from the days of old where they would say, you do not show that you have sufficient ties to your home country. You know, some people after four and five times, believe me or not, sometimes they get you. What are some of those things that would show evidence that a person has sufficient ties to their country? Well, like I said, you, you have your land, paper or you have some sort of something showing that property and that you have a job to return or also if you have family ties not um, like wife and children and that kind of stuff not your mother and your father you could leave them behind you don't want to but people you, see, you have to be careful always say that right but you generally unless you're a real guy you're not a, a real bad woman you're not gonna want to leave people would try to seek the best for their families and what's up but you don't want to leave these things behind and, and, and stuff like that but these are things that they would be looking for what ties do you have concrete ties do you have to because even a job you can leave the job how much were you making you can leave the job yeah do you have a bank mortgage that you are held to a student loan something that holds you back that wants you to Okay, you want to go, take a vacation, and come back. They're looking at those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Something that's concrete, if you please. Right, so a, so, visa, a visa is usually given for a period of time. That is correct. And that is, uh, for, for, for example, for passport holders of St. Kitts and Nevis, when you enter the United States, and this gives, gets us on to a, a little thing about the passport. When you enter the United States, you're automatically automatically given six months that's well known you get six months however in the camera don't spend six months because the government of the United States is gonna to want to know why were you spending six months in my country we give you six months it's automatic but do not spend six months 
Maybe but, a few but, weeks. But your ticket will state your return. Yeah, you can state in the ticket, but you can also get a change. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. So you could get a ticket for a year, an open ticket, something, and you can change the ticket, you pay the money. But don't spend six months in the country, otherwise they'll ask you next time you may come, but they, they just deny you. Now, if you're going to the United States, this gets us on to the passport. If you're going to the United States, you will want to make sure that your passport has at least six months left inside of it because they're going to give you six months. And we found people who are going there and they're denied uh, upon boarding at the airport, the airline's responsibility to check that to see how much time you have left in your passport. And for, to avoid being fined, they have to leave you off. And you may have to go and get a new passport, that's extra money. And the airline will change the flight for you, but that's money for the airline and a penalty. And the difference between the ticket that you have. Do you want to pay that sort of stuff? So you need six months in your passport. While some countries allow for three months, if you have a passport, look inside of it. Because there are a lot of people right now, as I speak, with expired passports. A lot of people. And the airline perhaps smiles at time. A particular airline will get a lot of that money. You see, going through the Caribbean, not much. But you're going up to Europe and you're going elsewhere, the airline will stop you. It's going to cost you. So if you're looking on television or you are listening by radio, take a look at your passport and see where it is. If you have six months less left, renew it. Renew it right now, national security. And right now it's like $250 to get all this stuff while it's normal, while you have no place to go. Next thing you know, you go to the airport, your passport doesn't have any the amount of time stipulated. And it's three hundred and fifty dollars to get it in four days. Mm -hmm. We're not certain you could get in, but you see, three hundred and fifty dollars. So it costs you extra. So back now from the passport to the visa. For us of St. Kitts and Nevis who go to the European Union, the Schengen area, we have three months. Well, not three months because we change that. Ninety days. It's in days because three months can be measured by different people in different ways. So it's 90 days, so you can go there. What can I go there to do in 90 days? You can go there as a visitor. So if you're going to France, Germany, uh, Austria, and certain other countries, which is different to the United Kingdom where we get six months. Six months for that, and 90 days. But the immigration officer may see you, and you may be the end person. Maybe today is the 10th, tomorrow is the 12th. You may be the end person, and they pull you over, and they say, where you're going, who, to whom are you going, what money do you have, and you don't have that sort of support, then they put you back on the next plane because they are still the, the gatekeepers. You see? And we have had that situation. You get up there. Even sometimes people may slip you here with a passport or certain days, but when you get up there, the immigration look inside your passport to see what you have, and then the immigration decide that you cannot enter. No, you look like you came to live and not to visit. So for the UK, for us, and it's a Nevis passport holders, it's six months. For the Schengen area, in the EU, we have uh, three months for, for that purpose. And you don't want to overstay any of those. What about the extension of time? For example, I go to the UK. Mm -hmm. I am given six months when I land at the airport. They stamp six months in my passport which means I have six months in the country. Yes. Suppose I want to spend an additional six months. You what happens? You check with the, uh, the, the home office in London, mm -hmm. and that can be... But you can get an extension. Yes, but you would need to justify why you need an extension. Mm -hmm. You see, you need to justify that in, in the Schengen area. And then I must highlight that these, uh, these visa waivers are for not for people who are going to study, not for people who are going to live, right? It's not people, people who are going to study. You may be attending a meeting mm -hmm. and that falls within the margins, that falls within the grounds for allowing you in on that visa, but not if you're going there to live, not if you're going there to study. If you were to be going to a European, one of those Schengen countries to study, the rules are is that you are supposed to get a visa from that particular country in which you will reside during your time. So as long as we stay in good standing with that passport and you don't overstay and all that stuff there, they allow you in so you can land in London, which gives you six months and take the train on the, the ocean and go over to France and continue to Germany and go to Austria and go to Belgium and different countries and the Netherlands because of this visa waiver. And the visa waiver means 
you don't have to pay for it. But if you're getting a student visa, that's a whole other thing. Even for the UK, you will need a student visa and you'll have to pay for that. Now, the other Schengen countries, mm -hmm. you said three months. Three months, yeah. The Schengen countries. You have to have a three-month visa favor. Uh, well, let's, let's put it. 90 days. I like it because the agreement is in this. It used to be months, yeah, but 90 days. It's specific for days. You, yes. you can extend that as well. You can, yes. But, but with justification. Justification. And you'll have to deal with the border people in those countries mm -hmm. for, for, for extension. So we have visa waiver yes to all those schengen countries to those schengen countries all and, of them. and some of the countries that are not even schengen we had to work out agreements with them the we scandinavian scandinavian countries. countries yes work out agreements with them and so basically they fall under the same thing for those other countries mm -hmm. so almost for the most of europe you can go to you can go to even with russia also we have a visa waiver agreement with russia somebody may ask who wants to go to russia but we are not the only citizens in St. Kitts and Nevis of St. Kitts and Nevis. We are citizens all across the globe who visit the different countries across the globe. And so we have to think now, not locally only, but internationally, because we have citizens residing all over the, all over the place and they want to know why, how can I get here? Um, why can I? And, we, and to keep people abreast, we have a, a website which keeps us updated. It's foreign. <laughs> dot gov dot kn foreign dot gov dot kn you can go to that website and it has a vast amount of information and we try as much as possible to keep it um dated look at it from time to time i visit my colleagues visit and time to time means every week not necessarily a specific day but you visit to see what is there and what can be done and all that kind of stuff there and maybe if somebody hacked into it somebody may say i went to the website and this is the case and what happened over there. Well, we have the website, so we visit the website to make sure that the information on there is accurate. If you wanted a Sengis and Nevis visa also, um, there are certain links on there that can link you up. That's that, that's a, And the, it's, it's evisa.gov.ken. People sometimes ask. Mm -hmm. And visa, people apply for Sengis and Nevis visa at National Security, which maintains a website at evisa.gov.ken. Mm -hmm. Now, now, what role does the ministry play? Foreign affairs. Yes. In terms of passports. Passports. Well, from time to time, people may be stuck. And talking about passports, I'm glad you spoke about that because it reminds me, and I'm going to come back to that. It it, it reminds me, there are a lot of people who are out in St. Kitts and Nevis who have passports that do not have the place of birth in them. Still. Still. And if you have one of those passports, I must tell you that it's, it's illegal. All those passports have been thrown out by the government. The government gave people an opportunity to come in, and if you had one of those passports, to come in and renew them free of cost. That went on for almost four years, if I remember correctly. And it could be more than four years. So if you have a passport of St. Kitts and Nevis, which doesn't have your date of birth inside of it, then you're in problems. You may think that you can go to the airport and travel. I'll tell you that you're not supposed to travel on it. In fact, they're supposed to lock you up when they find you with it because they've all been deemed illegal. So you can have somebody, one of our citizens overseas, with one of these passports, and from time to time, the ministry has to become involved because they seize you. You see how we get involved in the passport. They seize you, they say, I found Mr. Williams in my country with a passport, and normally when they say that, we understand it's a passport that does not have it in the place of birth because Interpol has been notified and Interpol circulates that information. So wherever you are found uh, with that issue, then they're supposed to lock you. They seize it, and they can, lock, they, can, they can detain you. Then they say, well, okay, well, I'm stuck in this country. Would you please petition the country to allow me to get back to a particular country until I get a passport? So a lot of times the request comes through the ministry. Someone may have traveled, may have lost a passport, Foreign affairs comes into that. Someone may have traveled with a passport that expires. They contact the, the, the government overseas, will contact our, maybe our mission, and contact foreign affairs. And even to find out, okay, we find this say this looks like it's a fault. So let's examine it. And it's a fault. So we, you report that to foreign affairs. You know? So from time to time, we get involved with these passport matters. Even someone may slip through and get up to London and they may find out. Why is this passport here? And the person just came on a plane. Well, 
Well, no, that passport is invalid. So can you get involved? Can you fix this matter? And that brings us to the idea of emergency travel document. Because with an emergency travel document, that is meant to take you to your home country. Not for you to leave your home country to go anywhere. It's actually to get you back to your home country. That's what an emergency travel document does. So if you ask somebody and they maybe have granted you a favor in the past and something and they said no more, none of that, you cannot make noise because the idea is for the emergency travel document, wherever you are in the world, to get you to your home country. To get to your home? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, to get your home. That's the idea. So people sometimes mix up, I don't want to go here. Money. No, I sent my passport to the High Commission in Canada in Trinidad and it's not coming back. Can I get no? Most countries will say no, you're not stuck in that country and you want to come back to where you live. You want to leave where you live to go elsewhere. And no, that's 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 not allowed. Mm -hmm. You know? So the ministry very much gets involved in stuff that uh, pertains, working very hard on behalf of the citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis to work out visa waiver agreements inform people about passport because passport is used particularly if you're sick and so many people around town don't they even have a passport <laughs> and that's fact you get sick your family have to go and take pictures get something for you and you don't have anything and everybody should have a passport because you need a passport to land in a country the days are gone when you could put your child on your passport then that no longer exists everybody must have a passport because you need a passport to be landed in a particular country. So if you, and this is, well, this is one of the things we get. Um, my aunt is sick and she doesn't have a, a visa, and, but she wants to go to the United States for medical assistance. Well, the idea is unless the person is in an air ambulance, then you have to travel. We may ask them to you know, move up the date for you, and that's something you can do online, or to grant you special favors to come at this time for that. But otherwise than that, you would need to travel to Barbados to get the visa. And when you're traveling, you'll need all the documents, particularly who is going to pay, because you know, in America, healthcare is a big issue and a big debate forever, and God knows mm -hmm. when it's gonna stop. So the office, the embassy of the United States will want to know, and whichever embassy you're applying to for that, will want to know who will take care of your medical expenses when you're in the United States. And I say this because these are questions that we get from time to time, and I hope that we're able to shed some light on that this afternoon and to get the public more informed on these matters. So part of your role as well in the ministry is to authenticate documents. Yes, they're called apostille. Mm -hmm. And so we authenticate public documents. Sometimes people send a parcel because many people have never heard about it. But there are certain documents that are, that are original. We put, a, we put a stamp on it. You bring your stamps from the post office. Each apostille costs $55. So you bring, let's say, a birth certificate, a marriage certificate, a police record, and those sort of documents that are publicly issued, the original, we put on it a stamp that you bring. And we put on our stamp, but you pay for it in stamps in the form of $55 per document. Now, if you have a copy of that document, you must go to a notary public, have it notarized, and then bring it to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs with $55 in stamps to be apostilled. So we deal with, we, we deal with, we, we deal with those type of apostille, documents. Apostille basically means to be certified. That is correct. Just a big word. For yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a convention, there's an agreement that deals with that. And so we, people come to the ministry from time to time. A lot of people don't really know it. But if you are dealing in another country, they may require you to have this certified, to have this document to say that such and such a law. And translations is, as And well. translations are sort of, uh, we generally don't do translation, but individuals, not the ministry itself. We perhaps may do it for the government on a, a do particular document, but generally not, let's say, for individual people. Individuals, People may do it on their own time, but it's not a service per se which the ministry offers. 
just like filling out a form, is not something that we generally offer. We leave that up to the private sector. But we can give advice and let you know where to get the forms, how the forms are filled out, and maybe it depends on who the person is, um, how to help. We have a lot of people here in St. Kitts and Nevis who have who wants their passport to renew for the UK. And so you go online. It's not, it's not Barbados that does it. You have to go for the, the home office in London, fill out the form, and it takes about six weeks. You can download the form and fill it out, but it still has to go to London. Barbados does not accommodate that. That is the High Commission of Britain, or the British High Commission in Barbados, will not process the passport. However, if you are a citizen of, let's say, the United States, Canada, the British High Commission, and you're here and you need to travel, you can, come, you can at, um, contact any of those and they'll try to accommodate you to get back to your home country. Mr. Penny, we'll come back to you at some other point. Some other point. You'll be here for the question and answer segment. But yes. we're going to take a break Indeed. at the moment and we'll be back. Yes, thank you. Working for you. A weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your St. Kitts Davis government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports, and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of St. Kitts Davis. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful Twin Island Federation. Working for you is weekly, every Wednesday live from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on ZIZ Radio, with FM, and Sugar City FM with we broadcast on participating stations. Working for you. Welcome back to Working for You. We are going to be discussing a different topic at this time. I am joined by the Permanent Secretary in the... Office of the Prime Minister, Mr. Andrew Skerritt. Welcome. Thank you. And I'm also joined by the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Hazel Laws. Thank she you. is no stranger to this program. <laughs> she has been here several times. So she is very comfortable. <laughs> Today we will be talking about the launch of SKN Moves, which is basically an initiative to get healthier, basically. Basically, <laughs> yeah. it is an initiative to get healthier. It is, it is a, it is a CARICOM initiative. Um, of course, you know the Caribbean has a very large number of non-communicable diseases: diabetes, hypertension, um, cancer, um, you name it. And so, therefore, this initiative is intended to keep the Caribbean healthier. A healthier Caribbean is a more productive Caribbean. Yes, that's so true. Good. So, when is the launch of SKN Moves? Thank you for having me. Um, the launch will be on Friday, August 9th. Um, this launch will be in Independence Square where we'll have an all-day testing, um, exercise activities. But where the Prime Minister is involved and the Ministers, this will start at 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. The following day will be a national walk, a walk from the, the movie theatre all the way to the third roundabout in Frigate Bay, which we, we call the lawns in Frigate Bay. So that is as, as it relates to the official, um, official launch. So a national walk meaning that every national and resident every is invited to this walk? Absolutely. Now, of groups. Um, like the Athletic Association, uh, Ministry of Sports, um, average kitchens and divisions from across the uh, across the federation. Um, as you are aware, um, let's Roy, chronic non-communicable diseases are the leading causes of morbidity and mortality in the federation. Uh, we don't want to outspend ourselves. We want to have a sustainable form of health health care. Um, it costs a lot to treat diabetes, to treat hypertension, to treat strokes, to build renal facilities. So they're, they're, they're what we call lifestyle diseases. So if we can encourage change through um, physical activity, through healthier dietary habits, um, through knowing your status, and, and by that I, I say getting specific tests annually 
um, to know whether you have diabetes, to know whether your hypertension is raised, uh, is raised. these things are, uh, are quite important. As it relates to the Prime Minister's office, this is an initiative that came out of Jamaica. Uh, Minister Christopher Tufton, he, he pioneered this and introduced it to the wider CARICOM um, um, heads of government. Our Prime Minister is the leading head with respect to health and human resource. So he is leading by example. So he has invited, of course, uh, Minister Tufton to come here to be a part of this initiative. And uh, of course, we're going to roll out our launch in the square and lead with the walk on the following Saturday. So he will be a part of the launch. Will he be at the launch? He yes. will be at the launch as mm -hmm. well as the, the, the walk, which will be on the following uh, Saturday. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Dr. Laws, um, why do you think that this initiative is so important? You are a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. You've been a medical doctor for many years. Mm -hmm. And all of your work in Jamaica, you have a good grasp, a good knowledge in terms of what is happening in the Caribbean with respect to um, non-communicable diseases. Why do you think this is so important? Okay, so this program, this initiative is very, very important uh, because non-communicable diseases or NCDs as we would call them is a critical, is a big problem, Caribbean-wide and in our federation. Three out of four deaths in the Caribbean, that's the English-speaking Caribbean, can be attributed to non-communicable diseases. And let's bring the, 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 the picture closer home. Uh, when you look at our statistics coming out of the Ministry of Health, uh, as much as 83% of our deaths uh, are as a result of cancers, heart disease or heart attacks, stroke, which is cerebrovascular accidents, and the complications of diabetes. So uh, NCDs is the biggest cause of our deaths and disability. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of illness, you have a significant number of our people with a diagnosis of diabetes and hypertension and their complications. Mm -hmm. So the NCD problem is a big problem. And so why this program? Now the, the evidence tells us that uh, the risk factors for the non-communicable diseases includes physical inactivity, meaning being a sedentary lifestyle, not doing anything in terms of exercise and unhealthy eating, yeah, along with tobacco use and abuse of alcohol. And so this initiative is critical because it's 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 addressing two of the four risk factors, physical inactivity and unhealthy diets. Mm -hmm. And so this SKN moves. I, I am excited about this program uh, because it's a, it's a scale of, of our, our response to the NCD cha cha challenge. Because uh, this program has three tenets, really. Uh, it speaks to our facilitating, encouraging, motivating the people of the Federation, St. Kitts and Nevis, to get active, to keep moving, and eating healthily eating more fruits and vegetables. The literature says we need to have as many as five servings of fruits and vegetables per day. How many of us do that? And so uh, we are increasing the awareness. And so by extension, you know, automatically, if you see your neighbor running, you may just, you know, be motivated and you start well. doing something, you know. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, preaching what I don't practice. Uh, yeah. having, I've embarked on a, on a journey myself uh, from February of this year and I've shed uh, a number of pounds and it's through physical activity. Every Sunday morning I walk about what two, two, three miles and then at least two, three mornings a week I try and squeeze in about a half hour on, on, on the treadmill. So exercise is key. And then eating healthily, you know, I, I'm trying to go more plant-based foods and cutting out the fatty meats etc and that seems to be working and so it works so we're not telling you something that doesn't work it's interesting to observe whenever you, you go to a function for example a banquet or there's a buffet 
or something like that. You can really see tables, how people eat. Yes. They pack upon the meat. And the vegetables, very you have minimal. a lot of, very, very minimal. minimal. But they pack yes. upon the meat, yes. they pack upon the rice, they pack upon the macaroni, pie, and all of yes. those sort of things. And very few vegetables in their plate. Yes. I know sometimes, you know, they don't really taste good. But <laughs> <laughs> there are different ways to prepare them. There are different yes. ways to prepare them. To eat yeah. more yes. and, and, yes. and so on. Yeah. But, but then again, it comes down to the organizers of these events because I'm coming from a meeting recently and the mid-morning snacks, you had no choice. It's just fruits. Uh, and uh, lunch is just fruits uh, and almost plant-based options. And so it comes down to even the organizers making a shift in terms of, okay, so what do I offer during this function? And then the sugary drinks. That's another thing. Our children especially drinking a lot of sugary drinks and then they're getting fat and, you know, a lot of sugar. We use a lot of sugar. We use a lot of salt. Um, too much, I must say. Sometimes I often wonder, and I always ask this question, why is fruit punch? When people make fruit punch, why is it so sweet? And somebody once said to me, oh, we make it so sweet because we put in ice in it, and so therefore it's diluted. But have you ever noticed that the fruit punch is always Very, extremely yes, sweet? sweet? Yes, and I absolutely. wonder why? Yes, absolutely. yes, yes, yes. And you know? so it's amazing to see the, the amount of sugar that we consume on a daily basis. And so that's why this program is so exciting because we are increasing our activity levels. So you'll be burning off those extra calories that you'll be consuming. So physical activity is the way to go. So physical activity reduces blood sugar levels and, and um, you know, your blood pressure level as well. Yes, it does. Yes, yes. Okay. So no. she lets you write a win-win situation for everybody when we come buying all three of these things. It's a win-win situation. But, but, you know, we're talking here about people's health on a personal level. But on the other hand, we are talking about the health of the society. Because if you have a society that is not healthy, it means there is less production. Of course. Sick people don't produce as much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you have less production, it simply means that you're affecting the sus economic sustainability of a country. If there's no sustainability in terms of health, then the sustainability economically of the country is affected. Yeah. And so therefore you have less GDP. Absolutely. Um, um, and so on. You know, people in workplaces sick and all of that sort of a thing. It's, it, affects, it affects the country. And I, I am it glad you... It affects the institutions um, in the country. And I'm glad you mentioned that because this program is going to be targeting workplaces you know, in terms of the Minister of Health will be collaborating with the Human Resource Departments to, to, to say, okay, so how can you foster or help your employees become more physically active? Are you going to put in a gym? Are you going to encourage uh, a football club? Or, you know, what it is, how are you going to engender physical activity within the different workplaces and even have uh, competitions amongst the business places and so we'll be targeting the workplace the schools and the communities right one of the hardest things to change habits <laughs> yes yeah. and when you have developed certain habits you know, become habitual. It's, it's something over and over and over. You've developed over years. It's hard to change. So changing people's habits is much harder than saying, well, look, we are going to have SK moves and we are going to have it launch in the square and a lot of people are going to come out and then what happens after that? So I'm really interested post-launch what happens post-launch? Hopefully, Lesroy, um, we are leading by example. For instance, the cool-down after the walk 
would be healthy snacks. Uh, I think I say fruit infused water. Um, we're not gonna have the, the, the national dish like the saltfish and the Johnny cakes and, <laughs> and, and the white bread. We're going to have fruits as a snack. You will have some whole wheat bread with avocado. Mm -hmm. So hopefully um, people will take this after the walk and perhaps change their, their eating habits. Um, as you said, we lead by example. And if you can change and not expect the good stuff, and I'm saying good stuff, quote unquote, because the good stuff is always the unhealthy stuff. Um, but find a different way of eating it would be a really really good thing for the nation nation to this to, to, to see that one of the things that you said which is so right and it sounds cliched um, uh, but 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 good health is linked to positive economic development and as the old saying goes a healthy nation is a wealthy nation mm -hmm. we have got to change in our eating habits we have had to we have to incorporate more exercise and we have to know our health status and it's funny because in my previous <laughs> thing, I, I was in uh, the health uh, Ministry of Health so this is really really a good thing for me and it, it's really nice to work with the Ministry of Health the office of the Prime Minister work in conjunction with the Ministry of Health and bring in the Ministry of Health in Jamaica along because this initiative like I said started in Jamaica and it was accepted by the CARICOM ministers of government yeah. so if we could implement that SKN moves here in St. Kitts and get our, our our population to make some real changes in terms of knowing their status, getting your test, doing more physical activity, eating um, um, more healthy foods, then we would have made a difference. Right. I, I know the Prime Minister has his monthly health walk, and I think he's to be commended for it. Absolutely. Uh, where constituents come together and, and walk the whole length mm -hmm. of the the constituency but once a month is not enough <laughs> <laughs> we have to encourage more of this we, we have, this we have to encourage it. and yeah. even though that is on a, on a, on a, on a communal level mm -hmm. on the personal level mm -hmm. I think people have to make um, the effort mm -hmm. you know so it's a personal goal um, you have to be responsible to, for your personal health you, you, have, have, to you have to be responsible, be responsible for to make that change on a national level if everybody comes together and make the difference and you see that change on the national level and this is what we're trying to achieve right so the habits of course would have to change and so you can develop new habits and yes. healthy habits yes because if you give yourself a challenge let me walk three days uh, for this a week, week. Mm -hmm. no 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 just start with one week mm -hmm. yeah and you may like the effect and then you go a second week a third week and you're walking you're you know, more it's, active it's, it's always easier to start but it's harder to maintain <laughs> I, I can think of the many times I've started because uh -huh. I know it's good and then I've stopped Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I fall back into the, the lazy mode and then mm -hmm. I tell myself I have to go again. Mm -hmm. So the maintenance mm -hmm. of a healthy lifestyle um, requires some work. It, and it, it requires dedication yes. and it requires the stick it to evenness. Yes. Yes. That that you yes. Yes. you yes. have to be able to stick to it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what helps with, with the that? Discipline. Discipline and mm -hmm. getting a partner, somebody to partner with. Mm -hmm. Because today I may feel lazy. And then my partner said, no, you come. Get out, get out, so let's go. Get, out, get, get out of bed. Precisely. So it's <laughs> nice if you can find a body, a partner, and that helps to propel you along. So that's mm -hmm. really nice. And yeah. Dr. Laws, when you're doing the exercise, you're encouraged to even eat better as well. Of course. <laughs> because of course. You, you know, you, yes. they go hand in hand, go okay? Hand in hand. Right. So you don't yes. want to do one and, uh, and yes. avoid doing the other. Right, because, because yeah. you get the maximum results from yeah, doing both. You don't want, to do, you don't want to do something and then you're doing something that is counter to what you're exactly. doing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yes. Right, so it's a holistic approach yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, that you're thinking and of. And even no. when you start eating more healthily, eating more plant-based stuff, and maybe denying yourself the sweet stuff, guess what? your taste but somehow change and you start to appreciate they make an adjustment yes <laughs> you, you, make, you make an yes, adjustment yes, yes, instead yes. of taking the big piece of cake you take a fruit yes, right. of or, some, or something yes, like that yes, something yes, like that yeah. and mm -hmm. then you soon find yourself refusing the very sweet drinks mm -hmm. because then all of a sudden it's too sweet well one of the things about the the human being is that the human being has been endowed with choice we always have choice, but choices have consequences. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And this program is helping people to make 
healthy choices. Mm -hmm. And healthy choices will reap healthy consequences, mm -hmm. the benefits um, um, of it. Now, the launch itself, what can be expected at the launch? Any entertainment, any sort of, you know, because people don't want to go to a boring launch. Right, right. <laughs> the, 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 the specifics of the launch, I'm going to let Dr. Laws handle that. Sure. But there mm -hmm. will be entertainment. There will be um, food stalls. There will be stalls for testing. Mm -hmm. There will be um, some uh, some exercise incorporated into this launch. So it's not just the official launch. We hear speeches from the Prime Minister and the Minister of Health from Jamaica and our Minister of, 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 of Health. But there are other specific um, 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 life-changing mm -hmm. um, initiatives for the actual launch. And I'll let the, the, the sure. CMO go into the specifics of it. All right. So the, 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 all the activities really get started at 10 a.m., on Friday morning, August the 9th, uh, at Independence Square. And then we'll be beginning with the outreach, the, 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 the screening tests. Right, and right. so individuals, we are inviting you to come on down uh, and get your blood pressure checked, your blood sugar values done, and your body mass in, in index in mm -hmm. terms of your weight and your height. Yes, and you can get your HIV test done. Mm -hmm. So you can come and know your numbers, know your status, all right? And so that starts at 10 a.m. Round about 11 a.m., uh, we are going into the healthy eating aspect of it. So that's around lunchtime. So that's the time to come. So if you want to come and eat in the square on Friday, right. uh, basically we are going to have farmers present, uh, representatives from the Ministry of Agriculture, representatives from the St. Kitts Farmers Cooperative, and Gideon Force Organic, Organic Farming Agricultural mm -hmm. Farm. They will be present and they will be highlighting their produce. And then you, we will have representatives from St. Kitts Agro-Processors Cooperative. Yes, yeah. uh, they will be highlighting their, their, their food products. All right, so they're healthy products. And then we will have a chef on site. And so mm -hmm. she will be demonstrating how we can... Culinary, culinary. Yes, mm -hmm. how can you In prepare healthy, <laughs> healthy food, right. mm -hmm. simple but healthy and tasty because persons think that healthy foods aren't that tasty but they can be and it's it's you know the seasonings the etc and the preparation right. and so chef Sandia Mitchum will be on site we will have food vendors uh, providing healthy foods fresh and nice cocktail and the smoothies the soup cafe will be on site and the food caterer Miss Elvira Williams she consented to be on site on Friday. And so you're going to have healthy options from around 11 to 3.30 p.m. on Friday. All right. And so uh, post launch. So the launch is between 4 and 5 p.m. And then right after, there will be a lot of music. Uh, the the, the uh, Sugar Bowl, Mr. Leslie Morton, he will be hosting the post-launch exercise. DJ? You'll be doing some DJ? Yes, yes, uh, yes. And doctors, I think the testing will be throughout the throughout day. The throughout the day, day. from 10 so way down till 7. Too. So that's mm -hmm. important. You can come and have your, your health checks done. And then the post-launch workout sessions will be led by Mr. David Walwin of Fit Wellness. And there will be other local gym instructors who will be on board leading out to the aerobic sessions. Mm -hmm. All right. And so we will be demonstrating what we are recommending. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a, it's a fun field day. I'm excited about it. NCD's uh, Dr. Laws. Can you reverse things like diabetes and hypertension? Can they be reversed? That you reach... <laughs> a stage where, for example, you don't have to be taking all this medication or you can come off of the medication. Okay, very good question and I'm glad you've asked. Yes, because we have a number mm -hmm. of persons who are diabetics, uh, who are hypertensive and they have uh, t been disciplined in terms of adopting a, a, a healthy lifestyle in terms of increasing their physical activities, shedding the extra pounds, eating healthily, and they have achieved control of their blood sugar, blood pressure values, you know, less than 140, 130 upon mm -hmm. 80, to the point whereby they may have been on three 
uh, antihypertensive medication, the doctor may titrate it down to two or even zero, no blood pressure medication. But then I won't say that they they, they, they no longer have hypertension. Is but what I would say that it's controlled. Mm -hmm. uh, but they still need to go to their doctors regularly, maybe every three, six months, once a year, to, to, you know, to, 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 to maintain their checks, to make sure the values are still within the normal range. And the same thing is for same blood thing, sugar. Yes, you can achieve control of your blood sugar values. You may go from two or three anti-diabetic uh, diabetic medication down to one. Or some are even controlled on diet. Just by Just diet. Just diet, eating mm -hmm. healthily. So with the lifestyle changing, you're seeing your numbers come, your up, numbers come down across the numbers board. come right. down. Weight, yes, glucose yes. levels. Right. Uh, when you start to exercise more yes, and, and when you start to eat the right, the, right, the right foods. And I find that persons who are diagnosed with diabetes and hypertension who, who practice self-management, meaning they monitor their values also. They have a blood pressure machine, they have their blood sugar machine, they monitor their values on a daily basis, they, and they adopt a change in their lifestyle. They can achieve control. Why is the checkup so important? Because I once heard a doctor say that many people are walking around with high blood sugar mm -hmm. and, and high blood pressure mm -hmm. and don't even know. You've answered the question. Uh, yes, you yes, have yes. to know your status. Yes, yes. You like and, and, why, and I'll go a step further. Mm -hmm. If you are diabetic and you're monitoring your values, and then last night I may have had a slice of cake, and I ma monitor my value this mm -hmm. morning, and it's high, I will know, okay, so that was too much. Mm -hmm. And so next time I'm, uh, I'm offered the cake, I may opt to go half a slice or zero and have fruit instead. Mm -hmm. You monitor your value the next morning, your normal value. And so you are encouraged by just monitoring what you eat and your values. You yourself would be take the initiative to choose, uh, make healthier choices. Mm -hmm. And so monitoring yourself is also very important. Well, once ago, these were seen as old people diseases, no. like no. hypertension, no. diabetes, no. and so on. But now we are seeing more young people mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. who are diabetic and hypertensive. And we are seeing more young persons under 69 who are dying from the complications. Mm -hmm. we, we, we deem them premature deaths. And so that's one of the long-term goals of this program. We want to reduce the premature deaths from NCDs. And more children are being diagnosed with diabetes as well. Yes, yes. Because of the sugary drinks. What is the Ministry of Health doing to ban sugary drinks? Okay, at present, <laughs> uh, we, have, we have started working on that policy our sugar sweetened beverage policy whereby we will be recommending uh, an increase in levy excise taxes on uh, a, 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 a collection of, of, of sugary sweetened beverages mm -hmm. and not only increase in taxes on SSBs but then we would also be advocating for vendors within school zones or very close right. to the schools mm -hmm. to be offering to the students healthier options healthier food choices right so it's not just a, a taxation on SSBs but being more comprehensive mm -hmm. in terms of uh, helping children to uh, choose healthier in terms of what what's offered to them what's what's accessible to them now will there be a nutritionist at the launch Yes, of course. There, there will be, be a desk, of course. Of okay. course, there will be a, a station for the health uh, promotion. Yes, promotion. Right, B because when you when you go to the supermarket, basically you look at all the, you know, the breakdown and in the terms labels. of calories and carbohydrates mm -hmm. and proteins and sugars mm -hmm. and and sodium, and all of that sort of a thing. Now, I suppose people need to now start looking at that. Reading the labels. Reading yeah, the labels. That's all part and parcel of taking we, we, Reading the labels. Mind you, I believe that some of those labels are not real. Huh? I believe some of them are fabricated. So but <laughs> <laughs> nonetheless, um, we have to read the labels in terms of the sodium and, and, and the sugars. Now, added sugars. Mm -hmm. 
That's a problem. That's a problem. In terms of juices and so on. Right. Mm-hmm. So you want to buy juices where there are no added sugars. Mm-hmm. That means that it's, it's pure juice. Mm-hmm. Is, that's what it means? Yes. And uh, I, I will invite you and uh, the general public to really come out on Friday mm-hmm. because if you were to come to our tent where the, the nutrition uh, the nutrition uh, personnel will be, we, we in our ministry we have uh, some pre-prepared packages where you would see uh, a, 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 a drink that's popularly, uh, that's very popular and then we would have measured the amount of sugar in the drink and you'll be amazed and then we also have uh, fat where we highlight some uh, commonly used foods and then we would have shown you the amount of fat that is in such a food and so you will have an idea at a glance the amount of sugar and fat in some of the commonly used foods. Well, some fats are good. For example, fats in avocado. <laughs> you, you have saturated fats. Yes, you have yes. poly, polysaturated and all of that sort yes, of fats. Yes, I'm talking the bad type. The fat. bad fats. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which would be in the, 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 um, the fat of the pork. Yes, and all, and but you know that is the sweetest part of the pork. <laughs> <laughs> so you can understand why, why sometimes they cut it off. You know, they, they cut it off. <laughs> what what is I, I really needed to add, and it's not just in the juices that we import and whatnot. I think you alluded to that earlier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, alluded made. to that earlier. The locally made foods, the tamarind drink, the passion fruit drinks, the yeah, lemonade, the the, the ginger beer, they're loaded with sugar. So we have to cut back on that as well. And, I and, call and, some of them sugar <laughs> water. You know, some when we were going, you used to be about swank. Yes, yeah. yes. You yeah, speak water. about, uh, you know, um, lemonade. Mm-hmm. But at the very same time, you can have the tasty lemon right. in it. You only just <laughs> you taste, taste the sugar. You just taste <laughs> the sugar. I, I think you one of the things so that, that mm-hmm. Samo was telling me about is the fruit-infused water. And this is the, the latest thing. Yeah, and the yeah, latest. Yeah, uh, that uh, means like cutting lemons, putting it in the water, and cucumbers. Yes, yes. That as well. Well, yeah. and lemons. Or just too. eating, drinking more water as well. Yes. Right. Yeah. You, you know, but you have, you have the fruits choice. in it. Yeah, mm-hmm. at the bottom. At the bottom of it. And then you will get the taste of the fruit in the water. Right. So it's fruit flavored water. Really. Okay. Yeah. okay. And she so convinced me to try that. Okay? Uh-huh. And I did try it. And it, it's, it's, it's quite tasty. It's quite refreshing. Yeah. You know. In yeah. fact, I have some in my fridge. But it's with lemons and cucumber. Yes. Yeah. 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 Different yeah. types of fruit. Whatever fruit you choose to put in there. Right. Good. Is there anything else that you would want to say about the launch? Any other information that you want to? We want to make this walk, a national walk, the biggest health walk that we've seen. So I'm encouraging everyone to come out at 5 a.m. Meet at the uh, the Saturday the 10th, Mm -hmm. 5 a.m. at the parking lot in the movies, the the movie theater. And we'll walk all the way to the last roundabout in, in Frigate Bay where you'll be entertained again because there will be a DJ. So while you socialize and eat your healthy fruit and your fruit-infused water and lots of water, um, you'd, you'd have done yourself a great justice and you'd have encouraged your friends and, and, and people around you to do things differently. Yeah. The three tenants to this, remember, healthy eating, knowing your status, and of course, keep moving. Right. So yeah. SK and Moves is the thing. and. Let's get everybody on board with SK and Moves. I believe in, in, in the philosophy of moderation. Mm-hmm. Doing everything in moderation. You know, there are some people who become health freaks and, and health fanatics. Oh, I can't eat this and I can't eat that. And, and so on and so on and so on. So much so that it becomes a sort of... It almost becomes a sickness in itself. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? You are so health conscious. You are such a health freak. That, that in itself can become a sickness. I can't have a little bit of the pork and I can't have a bit of that. But I believe that moderation, moderation yes, to yeah. do things in moderation. I had a friend when I used to study in Jamaica who was a health freak, vegan, no animal products, no eggs, no cheese or wow. butter, strict vegan. strict vegan, goes to the gym, you know, every day, sometimes for two, three hours. And she died of cancer. Hmm. Young. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> not to discourage anything, but I'm, 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 I'm simply saying, you know, that we still want to eat healthy. We still want to eat. We still want to eat. And we still want yes, to eat. And, and, and at the end of the day, we know that we are all going to die. But of course, maybe we want to die healthy. I need Dr. to just Lord. add to that. <laughs> it's not really all right. Because um, cancer is multifactorial. You know, she may uh, the individual may have been predisposed, you know, may have mm -hmm. had a, a you know, a relative, mm -hmm. you know, who would have had that cancer before. So it's not just the physical activity and the eating healthy. The genetics. It's, it's the, you know, there are other factors. environmental. Uh, environmental, environmental factors. factors. Uh, stress. Precisely. Yeah. 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 So and you keep your stress levels down yeah. as well. Yeah, but, but exercise <laughs> reduces stress. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exercise yeah. reduces stress. Yes. I just wanted to add that. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> I'm not being cynical, but what I'm saying is that it's, it's a whole... True. It is yeah. true. It's true. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Right. Because actually, there was a 5K in Jamaica about two, three years ago, and uh, a, a physician, very slim, very slender, very, uh, very fit, very healthy, uh, he died shortly after the 5k mm -hmm. you know so these things happen you know so we need to recognize that death is inevitable, it's inevitable. and um, you know the chronic diseases they are multifactorial yeah. there are but many you, you, reasons that you can, can lead a long life with some of the non um, chronic diseases yes, like yes. diabetes and hypertension yes. but you have to maintain yes. a healthy lifestyle yes. Yes. making that change and, and, and yeah, make, making the change in your in in your, in, in, yeah. in lifestyle yeah. Okay. Yeah. Physical activity helps you to control some of these conditions. Mm -hmm. And can I tell you, physical activity is that one thing that can help you to age more actively and healthily. Yeah. Aging. And it, it keeps your mind clearer yes, as well. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Okay, we are going to take a break now and when we come back we'll take some questions. Working for you. A weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your Sankit Davis government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports, and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of Sankit Davis. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful Twin Island Federation. Working for you is weekly, every Wednesday live from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on ZIZ Radio, Win FM, and Sugar City FM with rebroadcast on participating stations. Working for you. We have had a very lively discussion first with Mr. Michael Penny, who is Foreign Service Officer in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and Mr. Penny shed some light on the role of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and also in terms of visas. And then we were joined later on by the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Hazel Laws, and the Permanent Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister, Mr. Andrew Skerritt. And they spoke about the launch of SKN Moves, which will be launched on Friday in Independence Square an initiative that is designed to help people to exercise more and to eat healthier so that we can have less um, chronic diseases in our society. We now open the, the phone lines to your questions, the numbers to call. The overseas number is 1718-577-2916. That's the overseas number. And the local number is 465 2555, we await your calls. Working for you, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, Les Roy and company. Good afternoon. Right, my first question is about the, the passport business. Now, can any one of you tell me what is the reason for removing the country of birth from your passport since the country is not hurting your eyes visibly? That's the first question. And now to the health part of it. Can a marathon runner run 26 miles? And when he almost gets to the finish, he's a diabetic. And his sugar goes low, so low in his body that he can't go anymore. 
What is best for him to take? A cucumber or a banana? And the last question, why is it when you go to a doctor, the doctor going to ask you, 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 you your medical history? Anyone in your family had diabetes? Is there anyone in your family had arthritis? Is there anyone in your family had high blood pressure or cholesterol annual? Those are my questions. I, I would like somebody to answer me, please. Thank you very much. That's what you work for all are we? Yes, thank you for your question. Right. Mr. Penny, I think he yes. asked first. Concerning the passport and the place of birth, that would be a political question. That would be one that would be better answered by politicians. I worked in the office dealing with foreign affairs, so I'm not a policy person with regards to whether adding or taking out place of birth. So that would be for a political show. Yeah, but I think what he wants to know is that if, if it was taken up, but it doesn't really meet the international standards but that of would what be, the passport should, should have in. Uh, yeah, that would be something that the politicians would be best at answering. Okay. Dr. Laws, he asked a few questions in terms of uh, why when you go to the doctor, the doctor asks you about your family history and, and all of that. Okay, uh, well, I think this first health question also yes. spoke to <coughs> a marathon runner who would have run uh, about 26 miles and, and his blood sugar low. falls, which would be the preferred uh, option. A cucumber, a, a, a cucumber or, a or a banana. I think the caloric intake in the banana would be higher, so if those are the two options, I would I would uh, recommend the banana. Because in this case, what you want is to do is ele sugar. elevate yes, the, the, elevate yeah, the, blood, increase sugar. the blood sugar. Mm -hmm. right. right. And then he, he went on to ask about the importance of knowing, uh, meaning the care provider, healthcare provider, uh, ascertaining information regarding your family history. That's very important uh, because if my brother, my mother has diabetes, uh, I that tells me uh, I am genetically predisposed to also uh, developing diabetes and with that knowledge I can make healthy choices and prevent the diagnosis of diabetes I have a friend uh, who tells me that all his siblings are diabetics mother father all his siblings and he himself has made a conscious effort in choosing healthily in terms not. of keeping his weight down uh, what he consumes he is not a vegetarian but he eats mainly plant-based foods uh, he, he, uh, he focuses on his sugar intake and he doesn't have a diagnosis of diabetes so in essence he's the only member of family without that diagnosis so it's important as a physician to have an idea for example, if your mother or your sister has a history of breast cancer and you are also a female, you are seriously predisposed and so you need to start screening for breast cancer even earlier than the ordinary female who, would, who, do, you know, who does not have uh, that family history. Mm -hmm. And so as a physician, I always ask my patients these questions because you, you are looking at the risk of the individual and so your recommendations to the patients depends on their risk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so the family history um, plays... A very important part of management of, of a patient. Of, of management yes. of a patient. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Right. So knowing your family history, you can then take certain um, steps. steps to prevent right. going down that, that, yeah. that, that same road. Yeah. So even though you may have the genetic predisposition, it doesn't mean that you have to have the diagnosis. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, I really do think that more and more people are becoming conscious of their health. I've seen more people walking. Um, sometimes I go to the supermarket, sometimes I see people picking up more vegetables and fruits and so on. So that is a good sign that is to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. And this launch of this program is really to encourage people more. Because it's not to say that people are not eating healthily mm -hmm. and people are not exercising. That is happening within our society. 
but we are trying to increase more in, in terms of more people participating in these um, healthy um, activities. So, I asked the question earlier in terms of after the launch, what? What is the sustained program that you will have to ensure that you know you said you're going to the schools it's you, a phased you, approach mm -hmm. and so the first phase for the rest of this year we will be collaborating with the workplaces so we will be uh, moving SKN moves into the workplaces and the organizations uh, working with the human resource departments uh, to help them to foster increased physical activity amongst their employees and uh, encouraging healthier uh, eating in the you know kitchens and lunch options etc right. phase two we're going into the schools yeah working with the physical education uh, teachers etc in terms of increasing physical activity among students and then phase three would be the communities right working for you good afternoon Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, sir, and uh, good afternoon to your panelists as well as your listeners. I would like to find out, with respect to the passport situation, if one lost his or her passport, if your passport was stolen, I would like to find out from Mr. Penny if there is any possibility that one can be given some sort of concession when renewing that passport with respect to something similar to the concession that was mentioned with respect to the removal of the name and the date of birth in the passport. He said that there was an, an announcement whereby one could have renewed his or her passport free of cost. So I am here by asking if my passport was stolen, my vehicle was broken into and my passport was stolen, would there be any concession with respect to a discount or a reduced price in renewing the passport? Another question is with respect to the biometrics. When applying for the Canadian passport, I would like him to explain why does the applicant have to pay for the biometrics when the biometrics are required by the Canadian, the Canadian government and uh, he can also give an idea as to roughly how much it costs for the biometrics in particular. I would listen off here. Have a blessed afternoon. Thank you and you too. Those are pointed questions for Foreign Affairs and uh, the idea is when you lose your passport you're supposed to report it to the police and then if you apply for another passport then your application stays there you're you have to get an affidavit saying that the passport was stolen and it stays at the passport office for 30 days right 30 days 30 days before you can get another before passport. you get another passport that mm. is correct yes it's supposed to be that way yeah that's, that's a long time suppose something happens during yeah, that time but before you can get another passport that requires you to travel what happens? You talk to the permanent secretary of the Ministry of National Security, that, and they'll make a determination on that. Mm -hmm. But what you have also is, um, in, with regards to having a concession of passport, then that can that would only open up the doors for a whole lot of stuff. That people, everybody else would want something. You may say, well, everybody is not losing a passport, and this person is not losing a passport. But even people who are sick are required to obtain a passport and they have to pay for it even in, in their sickness. So, but that would be something that you can talk to your area representative on or even write to the Prime Minister, who is the Minister of National Security, and on whose portfolio passports fall. So if you want to come up with that idea, that is fine. With regards to the biometrics, it's the Canadian people who actually make that decision and in their minds, you want to get into my country, you have to pay for a visa and you also have to pay for the biometrics. I know the cost, but I just don't remember it offhand, but I know it's something that you will have to pay for and you're not going to go anywhere until you pay for the visa 
and you pay for the biometric. So it's, it's a reasonable cost. I think that's what they call it. They, if, they, if you don't remember, they, they, you must have an idea well, they, whether it's unreasonable they, or whether it's reasonable. But, see, but reasonable is broad. So it depends on who who decides what's for hundred. For example, for the for the U.S. visa, one hundred and sixty is for somebody unreasonable. They may think it's twenty. Twenty is it's good, yeah, it's but so. the idea is that the people decide that you're coming into my country, and this is what I'm going to charge you. And the idea is that they have. Uh, specific to biometrics is like we are providing a service and so for that particular service you will pay for it and the money that you pay for it ought to be able to sustain the contracted service for this uh, because even with the visas it's contracted so you have to pay for the visa and you have to pay and even with the US which we are by the US Embassy does the visas directly you still have to pay even though it's not contracted to a visa service so there's a cost involved for these things and the government decides what the cost is going to be. Okay. We'll take two more questions and then we would wrap up this program. There's no question at the moment. Okay. Interesting discussion. Visas. And, and sickness. And health. <laughs> and health. <laughs> but which is true. No, no, but there's, there's all, yeah, but all of that. All, all of that is a part of it because we work with the Ministry of Health on, on sort of stuff, um, different different programs. Mm -hmm. And so we go we go hand in hand. Someone may ask the Ministry, uh, an embassy may ask the Ministry for something, and we have to contact the Ministry of Health. People get sick from time to time, and they want. And I may have to travel. I may have to travel, and so, so and we want certain guide. documents. You would need certain even documents. Even a visa. That or a visa. Even a visa to yes. access care and mm -hmm. treatment. So we have to collaborate with Ministry yeah. of Foreign Affairs. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and you know different places where where embassies can facilitate or feed us with information on and on certain matters as to how to go about. Then we would normally do that. Working for you. Good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to your panel. Um, question: When are we going to be able to see um, upgrade with our medical facilities and doctors can go away and become specialized in certain areas so that we can come back here to think it and work within our communities and make things much easier for those patients who have to go away and spend 60, 50 thousand US dollars just to get an appointment to get get surgeries either in Barbados or Trinidad and those places. It's very expensive. So when are, when are we going to be able to see these upgrades? Okay. The, the first part of your question was a bit was a bit fuzzy. But um, I think, you know, we got what you were trying to say um, eventually. Dr. Okay, Lawson, you, want me to, you want me to repeat it? Repeat the first part. Okay, the first part I asked, when are we going to be able to see our medical facilities in here in, in the Federation upgrade to a much higher level? And also, when are we going to be able to know that some of our doctors can go away and be specialized in different areas of medicine. And so they can come back here in the Federation to assist us here in the Federation, make things much more easier with a, with a more upgraded facility that we can assist all those people who are sick. Instead of them going to Barbados, Trinidad, and those places and paying so much money, okay. so much US dollars just to get into a hospital and get get care. Okay, thank you. Dr. Laws, I think he's asking a question that many of us in the society um, are asking. You have lawyers a dime a dozen and doctors a dime a dozen and you you know they the general practitioners and, and um, you have lawyers who are just um, general lawyers. Um, soon you know they might be having to, to, to go and look for jobs where they have to be you know, cleaning people's houses and all this sort of a thing. You know, because really what you want is is, is, is a certain level of specialization mm -hmm. rather than just having so many general practitioners and so many lawyers a dime a dozen. 
you can't make any money in a very small society like this. Dr. Laws, before you go, <laughs> the funny thing is I'm very passionate about health. This is where I was before I, I moved to office mm -hmm. of the PM. What I can say, and I will let Dr. Laws as the chief medical ans uh, officer answer this, but what I can say, in the 20 years I've been involved in health care, I have seen dramatic changes in St. Kitts and Nevis. Uh, an ICU was introduced, there was no ICU. Uh, EMTs were introduced, there were no EMTs. An oncology center has been introduced, um, so to treat persons with uh, that horrible diagnosis of, of cancer here. Um, a renal unit has been put in, and the funny thing is when I was a uh, permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health, it's amazing how you impact on people's lives and you don't know. I was with my family, I like to tell this story because it's one of those good stories, like shopping around in one of the supermarkets, and this older lady came up to me. I had no idea who she was, and she was saying, thank you, Mr. Skerritt, for, 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 for watching. I'm like, what did I do? And we started talking, and for some reason, she had a young son who needed emergency renal treatment. Uh, he needed dialysis. I don't think it's something that he would have needed across his lifetime or uh, but at that point yeah. for whatever it was. And she said to me, you know, I couldn't afford it and you guys have just opened up. I would have lost my son and we have to thank you and the Ministry of Health. And I said that's to say this, we've touched the lives of so many people, but health, the system has evolved over the years and will continue yes, to evolve. Do we need more specialists? Absolutely, but we've had more specialists here than we've had in past years. So it's a constant evolution and we need to get to that level. Will we ever get to that level? Yes. Um, absolutely, because yes. that's what you work to. Yes. And I'll let Dr. Lars continue yes, from yes, here. Yes, yes. So there has been um, improvement in the health system to answer his question. And it's continual. And, and, and it's, it's evolving. It's continual. Mm -hmm. Uh, each day we are making all the efforts to improve uh, the health services that we offer. All right. right now we are looking at our cardiovascular services in terms of persons coming in with heart attacks, etc. Our ability to stabilize and even treat. All right. It's a, a work in progress. Mm -hmm. We've come a long way and we still have a, a long way to go. Uh, but it is doable and yes. we will get there, mm -hmm. yes? Mm -hmm. And in terms of patients having to go overseas for care, yes? Um, it speaks to maybe not having some of the specialists on board. For example, ear, nose and throat specialists, we have one that visits, uh, but in terms of a local physician going overseas to, you know, for training in this field, all right? And some super specialists uh, we are also lacking in, uh, for example, uh, neurosurgeons. Uh, one visits a local, he visits from time to time. And so persons may have conditions and we may not have the specialists on board. And so they may have to go overseas for care. You, you touched on uh, our oncology unit where we, patients get chemotherapy. But some cancer patients need radiotherapy. That's not accessible here. And so they may have to go to Antigua, uh, Trinidad, or Guyana, or Cuba for such care. Right, and, and his, yeah. his, his, his question is not, is not totally irrelevant mm -hmm. in the sense that, of course, it's a good question. It's a very good question. It's a very good question. Uh, one of the things um, to, yes. to Lesroy, mm -hmm. apart from the fact that I know we are pressed for time, and this caller's question was quite important. Yes. Um, we may not have all the services, and even in the United States where I live, not all the hospitals have all the services. You often have to go to another um, hospital for, mm -hmm. sp for specific mm -hmm. interventions. In our case, we always would have to make arrangements with facilities in North transfer. America, yeah. uh, we have to transfer patients, patients to see how we can reduce the cost for the Kittish and Division who has to go abroad for because our medical. Cost. And it is a good question because yeah. of the cost. And I remember at one time, every time we had to fly in a pathologist, every time an autopsy had to be done, mm -hmm. and that was so costly and so on. Mm -hmm. Working for you, good afternoon. This is our last caller for the day. Working for you, good afternoon. Okay, thank you for taking my call, sir. Um, I did not say that there's not any improvement in the past 20 years. Yes, there have been lots of improvement, but I think there can be more, especially with our facilities that can handle the type of um, trauma cases and things like that that are taking place. 
throughout the Federation or even throughout the Eastern Caribbean right now. We want to be able to have our, our, our nation hospital as a place where people coming in, people can say, okay, Barbados costs $90,000, let's go sink because I have $80,000, and you can get the same quality professional treatment. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, thank you very much. We are out of time. Is there anything you want to say in wrapping up, making it quickly? Yes, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is there for all the citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis doing the work of St. Kitts and Nevis and the, representing the government of St. Kitts and Nevis in the international arena. And if you have questions with regard to travel and certain questions you may have, family members overseas and things like that, who may have problems and matters, you just call the Ministry 467-1161. Dr. Laws. The Ministry of Health is continually working to improve the health services that we are offering to the people of this federation. And in short order, additional health services will be made available to the people of the federation. Mr. Skerridge. Uh, definitely, Prime Minister Harris being the leading uh, Prime Minister with responsibility for health in the CARICOM Quasi Cabinet is very excited about the SKN Moves initiative and once again inviting everyone to come out. Come out in your numbers on Saturday for the walk and come out to get tested. Watch how healthy diets, uh, healthy food can be prepared and to get moving on Friday afternoon. Thanks a lot. Okay, well I thank all three of you. Mr. Penny thank talking you. about visas and Dr. Laws and Mr. Skerridge talking about this healthy initiative called SKN Moves, which will be launched on Friday in Independence Square. I want to thank all of our listeners to today's program, those of you who called in um, and asked your questions or, or, or you know, um, made suggestions. We thank you every week. Next week, we will be back for another edition of Working For You. Until then, I am Les Roy Williams. For you, a weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your Sankit Davis government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports, and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of Sankit Davis. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful Twin Island Federation. Working for you is weekly, every Wednesday live from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on ZIZ Radio, with FM, and Sugar City FM with rebroadcast on participating stations. Working for you.